welcome back to Combat Mission, where we're going to take a look at poking holes in vehicles. The different types of penetrating hits and what happens for each one, plus a little bit of in-game battle damage assessment, which in Combat Mission terms basically means looking at the hits you've inflicted on enemy vehicles and trying to work out what you've actually achieved. If you are lucky enough to land a shot on an enemy target in Combat Mission, then the target vehicle will display some hit text. This tells you what kind of hit you've scored, and where on the target vehicle the hit has connected. This is all in white. If the target has been penetrated, then there will be some red text underneath to show what kind of penetration has taken place. There are four types of hits. Non-penetrations, spalling, partial penetrations, and full penetrations. If the incoming projectile is defeated by the target's armour, then it is a non-penetrating hit. There will be no red hit text. The incoming round has pancakes on the armour, not burned all the way through, or simply bounced off. This can feel a little depressing, but it's important to remember that non-penetrating hits can still do damage. There are important systems on all vehicles that cannot be protected under armour. The crew will always need vision slits, periscopes and other optics to see outside their vehicle. They will always need external radio antennas if they want to communicate without waving flags at each other. All vehicles have some kind of exposed propulsion system, be it wheels or tracks. These subsystems can not only be damaged by non-penetrating hits, but any damage inflicted is cumulative. Successive hits will eventually destroy critical systems and render the target vastly less effective or even functionally disabled. The next step up from the non-penetrating hit is armour spalling. This is technically a non-penetration. The incoming round does not make it through the armour. Instead, the shockwave of the round's impact travels through the armour and breaks chunks and fragments off the inner surface. These fragments are the spalling. They are carrying the transmitted energy from the impact shock, so they go flying off into the interior of the vehicle at high speed and at high temperatures. This can have various effects depending on how much spalling there is and what it interacts with. It could hit nothing critical, it could damage or disable subsystems and crewmen, and in some cases it could get lucky enough to strike ammunition or fuel and start a fire or even cause a catastrophic cook-off though this is pretty rare, especially in the modern titles where vehicles are going around with spore liners to specifically deal with this problem. Moving on from spalling, we have partial penetrations, where part of, but not all, of the incoming projectile makes it through the armour. So, for example, an armour-piercing shell might have enough energy to punch a small hole in the target's armour, allowing the tip of the shell through while the back end pancakes or disintegrates on the outside. So we have two major effects here. First, there is the part of the projectile that actually penetrates and is bad news for anyone or anything inside that it intersects with. Second, the armour at the point of the penetration is violently displaced in a similar way to spalling. So we have a shower of hot metal fragments accompanying the penetrating element. Last and certainly not least, we have the full penetration. This is so important, the hit text comes in capitals. Here, the incoming projectile functions as intended, piercing the armour and doing nasty things to the inside of the vehicle. So we have the full projectile interfacing with the internals, which being larger and carrying more energy is far more destructive than the smaller chunk that makes it inside with a partial penetration. This is again followed into the vehicle by fragments of the armour it has displaced as it's punched through, though of course, again compared to the partial pen, there are a lot more of these. A few different things can happen from here on out depending on what kind of projectile we're talking about, whether it's solid shot, a molten jet, or a shell with explosive filler. But the important concept is that it's inside the target vehicle with the potential to cause maximum damage. Even a solid penetrator will impart a significant amount of energy to the target, so there will be a lot of heat and a lot of pressure, neither of which are very good for squishy humans, mechanical systems or internal elements are likely to join the party with secondary effects, things like fuel, ammunition, propellant fumes, all that fun stuff. No matter what kind of hit the target takes, there are three basic things that can happen. The target can be unaffected, it can suffer damage to subsystems and crew, or the vehicle can be knocked out or destroyed. The two extremes on this scale are very easy to see. If the target is unaffected, then nothing happens. 
If the target is knocked out, then it will stop and surviving crew will bail out. If it is destroyed, then something catastrophic has usually happened involving fires or explosions. You can select vehicles and check the suppression meter in the bottom left of the UI to see if they are knocked out or destroyed. This is based on what your pixel and are seeing though, so it's not always up to date. In between the two extremes of nothing and total destruction, the effects of hits can be less obvious, so if you want to guess at what damage we might have caused, we need to combine the type of hit with the hit location and consider what might be inside the target vehicle at that point. We need to do some basic battle damage assessment. And that sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. It's pretty easy to work out where subsystems and crew positions are inside vehicles by examining the external features. The easiest is usually the engine. This is usually either in the front or the back of the vehicle and is given away by exhausts, ventilation grills and large access hatches. If we have a hit in this area, we can guess that the target vehicle has a damaged or disabled engine. We can also exploit the game audio a little bit here too. Vehicles with disabled engines don't make engine noise. So if we get close, we can tell if we scored a mobility kill. In a similar vein, hits on the tracks or wheels usually also translate into degraded mobility. The next most obvious areas are the actual crew positions. Crewmen need to be able to get in and out of their vehicle and they need some way of observing the outside world. So crew positions are usually easily identifiable by hatches and optics, whether these are vision slits or periscopes. With a bit of thought and some experience or by doing a little research on the target vehicle, it's possible to work out which crewman is in which position. Crewmen can move around inside vehicles to assume different positions if their crewmates are killed or injured, but usually some damage is also done to the controls and mechanisms at each position that will also reduce the vehicle's capabilities. Finally, the remaining critical subsystem on most target vehicles is the armament. Obviously, it's very useful to know if an enemy vehicle cannot shoot back. Hits to gun barrels and missile launch units are the most immediate cause of disablement, Gun barrels in particular are not going to work very well or very safely if they have chunks missing or they get bent. But it's important to remember that gun type weapons also project inside the vehicle as well and penetrations to, for example, the side of the turret or to the gun mantlet can damage gun breaches, fire control systems and weapons controls, all of which can disable or significantly reduce the effectiveness of the weapon. In addition to the physical damage, it's important to bear in mind the psychological element. Tankers do not like it when holes suddenly start appearing in their tanks. It's possible for partial or full penetrations to fail to do any meaningful damage to a vehicle, but provoke the crew to panic and bail out. If the vehicle is not heavily damaged and the crew survive long enough to recover their nerve, it is possible to order them to recrew their vehicle which naturally means that if you see an enemy crew bail out, there is no reason to stop engaging their vehicle. As a general rule of thumb, it's best to carry on shooting enemy vehicles until they're on fire. And that is a really quick look at penetrations in combat mission. Judging the effects of different types of weapons and ammunition on different types of armor and target vehicles gets easier the more experience you gain playing the game, but hopefully this has been interesting and helpful for you. I'll see you in the next video.